Today we're starting off with this blanket that I actually found in Houston. I, this is a gift for my daughter. Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. You guys know that in June I went to Canada to see Jackie, which is she's in my upcycle uh, gathering and we all got together or those who could get together. We thrifted till our hearts were content and I came across the most amazing blankets and I brought a ton of them back with me, um, stuffed them in my suitcase, got a shrink wrap bag and brought them back. And so we didn't know what we wanted to do with them until I just decided I wanted to make one of those amazingly comfy long blanket cardigans and so i am super excited to share this video with you guys because we made them they're on the site right now we sold one we made four in total for this round um we sold one already so definitely if you're interested check them out um there's one that goes all the way to the floor so like they're all amazing i do have a pattern for this that i adapted just for my knees and let's talk about the pattern for a moment uh, you can use any pattern you like, but this particular pattern, what you're concerned about is you want to make sure that your finished edges are right. So you need a finished edge along the bottom. You need a finished edge along the collar. And so, and you need a pattern that has a collar that kind of folds over so that you can have a finished edge all along the back of your neck. So that was my concern. We did adapt a pattern to perfectly fit our needs. You can purchase this pattern and that way you won't have to worry about finding the exact pattern that will work. This blanket is smaller than what I would typically use for this particular upcycle, but it is for my daughter. So I feel okay in adjusting the shoulder seam. So we're not gonna have as much width on the shoulder. So I took out an inch and a half on each pattern, we're just gonna make sure those match up. And we're gonna use it like this. They fit in between about a size six to a size uh, 18. I advertise eight to 12, but we've been putting them on everybody and they look so good. This is the back, it needs to be cut on the fold. And then this needs to be a finished edge. So we're going to have the fold here. And this is a long pattern. I just do get what I can out of it. So it is gonna hang off over here. It's not gonna be as long as it possibly could be, but that's fine because she's not as tall as me. And then this pattern, um, this is the blanket front. We need to cut two of these. This needs to be on a finished edge. This whole thing needs to be on a finished edge and then we need a finished edge down here. So we're going to put this over here. We're going to overhang it the same amount on both sides. And then this sleeve pattern is an ex extreme length. You can adjust it however you need it. I get as much of this as possible. And then I put the sleeve down and say, okay, I think that sleeve will do. Of course, measure your arms and see if that sleeve will do. So since we have that laid down, we just wanna kind of compare that and just get what we can get like this project is all about just <laughs> getting what you can get out of it. And you just wanna really double check that you have all of your finished edges where finished edges need to be. Once again, the bottom should be finished. The whole edge of the front should be on a finished thing. Bottom of the sleeve should be a finished edge. And that's why I lay it out like this. Now it looks like I don't quite need to take so much off of the shoulder. So I'll probably just cut in between. All right, so I just wanna make sure these line up at the bottom so that I know I'm taking off, you know, it'll be the right length. And I know that everybody's concerned about um, what's gonna happen when I cut it. We've done four of these so far with no issue. You just have to be careful when you're sewing. If you are concerned, you can purchase something like this. This is Stay Tape. And basically what this is, is you can um, put this on the edges and it'll help your uh, edges to stay together while you are sewing. Oh, and I did find this blanket at one of my local family thrift centers for $2.72, so. That was a steal.
All right, so now we're going to move these pieces out of the way carefully. And now we're gonna cut our sleeve. And I'm just gonna try to get it as, keep it like straight as possible and get as much sleeve as possible out of it. All right, and with everything said and done, that's all I have left. Like there's very little waste in this project. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. We are in the middle of an upcycling our Dream Pinterest wardrobe series, which is just going amazing. We're about to put out a compilation of everything we've done in that series this year is gonna be absolutely amazing. And you don't wanna miss what we do next in the new year. So definitely follow so you don't miss it. All right, back to the video. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, so we're gonna move this out of the way. With this piece right here, this is the front bodice piece we are going to sew this together. Now this is going to essentially be a French seam. Yeah, and I'll talk you through the process. So we're gonna sew this, we're gonna go sew it. My sergers are out of whack <laughs> because of this project. I think something that will save your sergers, because like I said, I'm, I have to go get my sergers serviced because of this project, um, because I was trying to sew both layers together at the same time. So now what I would recommend is when you first have everything cut out, take it to your serger and sew all the seams, all the raw edges, not the finished edges, all the raw edges just flat. So it'll just be one layer. And that way, one for one, you won't have to deal with all of these little things that are coming off now. Um, and I'm gonna have to serge this after I get my serger serviced and hopefully it doesn't re-mess them up. Or you can also, once you have it all together with the seams, you can go back and add seam binding. That's another way to not mess up your surgery. And you really want to establish what part is going to be your front and what part is going to be your back, especially if it looks different on each side. So let's go sew just this. Here's a couple of tips for sewing on top of this thick blanket. You can put a piece of paper underneath the presser foot and you'll just be going through the paper and that's gonna keep the little fibers from getting stuck underneath the presser foot or getting stuck in the presser foot. But if you don't use paper, you're gonna have to really be careful because they will want to hook onto the front of the presser foot. You can also use a walking foot. After this, you'll see me switch to my cell right, which is a walking foot industrial sewing machine. Okay, so we made that stitch. You can serge it if you like, but it's going to be encased in a semi French seam because we're going to turn it this way and we're going to stitch it again. Like, what the heck? Oh, oh, it is hooked. See, that's why I did not want to have so much foot pressure. Probably switch over to the cell, right? Okay, so what we have is a piece that is the back of the collar so that a pinch of it didn't get in. And so you want to make sure that that whole first seam gets into the second seam, all right? So now we have a collar that once it's folded, it's just flat, you don't see any seams. Like I said, you could just serge this side, but for this, because it is like prone to be seen, I wanted to do it where it was a French seam, but you can do whatever you want. All right, so now we have this and we're gonna sew it to this piece. The curve goes to there, and then we turn and we sew the shoulder seams. So we're gonna sew this first. So I'm gonna turn the needle and go right into my shoulder seam on this side. And I'll go back and do the shoulder seam on this side. So we've sewn that. And so now let's talk about what we're doing so you can understand. This is the shoulder seam. 
this is the other shoulder seam and you get kind of this point on the end, it's a fold down collar. And that's the, really the best way I could think of in order to preserve the edge all the way around the collar. So now all we need to do is add the sleeves and sew the side seam. We're gonna go ahead and open this back up carefully. Take one of our sleeve pieces and I just wanna match the middle to the middle. Add a pin there. So we're gonna go start from one end. So our sleeve all the way down to the arm curve. Um, so now we have our sleeve on. See the sleeve there? This is the sleeve. We're gonna take the sleeve, fold it in half. This is the sleeve. We're gonna sew the sleeve all the way down to the end of the coat. But you can see, as long as you're not manipulating it overly, you know, like you're not being rough with it, it's not falling apart. So that is it. This is what the blanket cardigans look like. Really happy with how that turned out. It's a little bit shorter than I would have liked, but you know, different blankets give different results. That blanket was about 48 inches by 48 inches. I try to get the biggest blankets I can find, um, you know, to get that little, that long effect. But you can see here, these things are just, uh, they are turning out so good. So yeah. Definitely, if you're interested, get that pattern and get yourself a cozy long cardigan. And definitely let me know in the comments if you plan on doing it and how it turned out. Oh, I didn't mention that I'm getting ready to go to the Janet Jackson concert. <laughs> so that's why, that's another thing. Um, but it's been a crazy day, but I want to make sure I got this in. Promise you guys this video and I intend it to deliver. All right, I am off to the concert. I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.